Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Now, before we do get into today's first story, I do want to give you a warning. There is verbal and emotional abuse, mentions of sexual assault and harassment. So if you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are always down in the description and along the timeline below. And this is from Jazzy Finn, entitled, My 21 female boyfriend, 21 male, is getting too comfortable. Me and my boyfriend have been together for almost three years and living together for almost two. I'm at university and work as a manager, and he has a full-time job at around 30 to 40 hours a week. At the start, it was your stereotypical happy and progressive relationship. He'd get me flowers, make me coffee in the mornings, I'd cook his favorite meals if he had a bad day, and we would go on dates. Our friends used us as a template for the perfect relationship since we knew how to communicate and anything that almost became a fight was resolved within the day. We were both on the exact same wavelength with everything. In the past year, it's become really difficult to have good communication. I've kept doing what we've always done and brought up anything bothering me and how we can resolve it. But he started making empty promises. For example, my university semester started and I got a promotion at work, so I asked him if we could shuffle the house chores a bit since I was doing way more hours. He said, yeah, of course, and did the normal hug and kiss, but nothing changed. If I bring it up again, he just brushes it off as, yeah, I'll do it later, but he doesn't. I thought he might be struggling with something that he didn't want to tell me about, so I gave him more leeway and just asked for a little bit of help here and there. So I would make dinner and just ask that he unloads the dishwasher afterwards. But he would do the same thing. Agree, but pretend I hadn't asked. The final straw for me was a couple of days ago. We were getting a bunch of furniture moved to our house and my parents were helping us at 10 a.m. I told my boyfriend this and he said that he's completely fine, but he's already agreed to go clubbing with our friends. I said that's fine as long as he helps me clear out the living room for the new furniture before he leaves. He says that his friends want to have a house party until 6 and say we can't be out that late, but we can stay out until 3. He says that's fine. I hadn't been on a night out in ages, so they invited me along. I just got a new dress and I was really excited to go out. I got my dress and makeup ready and told my boyfriend that we had to start moving furniture now if it was going to be ready in the morning. He said sure, give him a minute to finish a fight in his video game. I started moving things and not gonna lie, really struggled with the heavy stuff. So I reminded him to help me move things. He tells me to wait. Two hours go by with me really struggling to lift couches and he jumps into the room, dressed up and ready to leave. He quickly tells me that he's ordered a taxi and is leaving soon. I ask what about moving the furniture? And he just shrugs. I say that I can't go on a night out without moving this stuff first and he just brushes it off. I remind him to at least be back by 4 a.m. so that he won't be super hungover while helping in the morning. Long story short, I had to stay home and move the furniture so we would have room in the morning. He still went out without me. I was done by about 1 a.m. and woke up at about 7 a.m. and he still wasn't home. He answered and told me he was at the house party, but he'll be home soon. He got home exactly 10 minutes before my parents arrived. In short, he promised he'd be home by 3 but came home at 10 a.m made me stay home alone to sort furniture, and when the furniture was finally in the house, he refused to help me move any of it again. This happens constantly. If he promises to make dinner, I end up making myself a sandwich at midnight because he didn't do it. If he promises to wash our clothes, he only washes clothes that he is going to wear the next day. He promises to buy me flowers again, but it's been almost a year since he has. I brought this up to him yesterday night, saying that I didn't feel loved, I felt you since I do everything. He again had the conversation saying he knows he's made mistakes and he'll do anything to help me feel loved. I asked one thing, help me in the morning with chores. He promised. Guess what happened? I, of course, ended up doing all of them myself. I'm getting so fed up with mothering him and forgiving him continuously. And this is the first time in three years I've actually thought about leaving. I know that I won't because I really do love him and his family, but nothing I do can get through to him. And there was a story just recently we read about talking about respect and the lack of it, which is 
clear in this case. He's showing you that, you know, he's constantly breaking his promises to you. And I gotta say, I do find it strange that whole about moving the furniture thing that he continuously put it off and then just went out and left you when you was invited to go as well. Couldn't imagine doing that. And I think that lack of thought from him in that particular situation and probably many others as well would really give me pause for thought there. Whether you want to take the time and say, you know, sit him down and say, this is it, that you've gone way too far for me right here. It would be totally up to you in this situation. But OG Illusion says, sounds like he wants to grow up without the growing up part. You can't have a relationship and expect the other person to do it all and then want to have fun too. He needs to do his chores before going to have fun. Tell him to stop making excuses and to take more accountability when it comes to helping out around the house. Your place just as full. He can definitely help out, especially if he wants to go clubbing. Brian and Mike says, sounds like the reality of your relationship is finally hitting and the love goggles are off. You're right, he's got him really comfy because as it stands, it sounds like he can just get away with anything and you'll just let it go. He's not held accountable. Mostly because when you tell him, he can just promise you change and surprise, no change. Even in your post, you don't want to leave him. So why do you think he'll change if there's no risk of you leaving? It's not that it's not getting through to him. It's that he's not being held accountable. So he can do something like ignore you or quite frankly, stick you with stuff like moving all the furniture while he goes to have fun. And he'll know you'll still be there when he gets back. You're being taken advantage of 100%. You can't fix the changes you need to make because they depend on him. You need to start holding him accountable. Show him that he can and will lose you. See how quickly he changes and hopefully that's the kick in the ass he needs to stop doing this to you. It will crumble and things will revert if you always forgive him and do not hold him accountable. OP responds and says, I think I've got it in my head that he should change because he loves me. So that's why I don't want to give him an ultimatum. I know I have to though. Any advice on how to show him that I'm serious? I don't know how to do it without him blowing it out of proportion. Itaya says, you're 21. You're not married to this guy. You don't have kids. You don't have property together. Right now, you could make a clean break without losing anything but him. Remember that. He shows a clear lack of respect for your time and energy. If you had done this two years ago, would you still feel like you wanted to stay? If someone loves you and respects you, they will show you that through their actions, he is showing you that he loves you for what you do for him but has zero respect for you as a partner. Honestly, if I were in your shoes, I would make it clear that you have no obligation to stay, but you stay because you love him. Lay out exactly what is going wrong and come up with a solid solution you both agree on. If he fails again, leave. Someone who refuses to make a change for you when you've repeatedly expressed how it makes you feel does not respect you. Good luck, OP. OP responds and says, thanks, you put it in a really good way. You do rent a house together though, and we have a cat. As dumb as it sounds, that's a big deal, lol. If I did leave, I have my best friend who's always said we can get a flat together, but his siblings genuinely see me as their sister. I don't want to break their hearts either, so leaving is an absolute last resort. So then OP updates the post two months later and says, a lot has happened since this post. I took the words and advice of the comments and gave him an ultimatum. He needs to fix the problems in the original post or I'd leave. I sat him down and explained that he's treating me like his mother, not his partner. So I'd set up a bed in my office and sleep in a different room and he didn't need me to take care of him at a whim. He was super shocked that I'd hit him with this out of nowhere, ignoring that I've been asking for help for months. I had to drag one of the spare beds upstairs and set up a room, all while he was sitting refusing to help me. Fine, nothing I'm not used to. I realized once the office was set up how happy it made me to have my own space without needing to fix all of his problems and he did not take that happiness well. I noticed him getting snarky and aggressive whenever he saw how much I was enjoying my holiday from catering to him and just overall being weird but still not really doing his own stuff. He'd just leave mugs and plates to get moldy in his room or leave stuff everywhere in the living room. I noticed that he started to nitpick everything I did and it seemed like he was trying to find something anything to make me feel bad about to make his faults less bad, I guess. He complained about my friend group on Discord because he didn't like that I had friends that weren't through him, even though I invited him to come on with us, introduced him, and he had a good time. He also complained that I wasn't giving him enough attention or helping enough. Yeah, welcome to my hellhole, pal. But everything he tried to fault me for was quickly shot down. Of course, I'm friends with them, haven't done anything wrong and I've invited you to join all the time. 
And of course, I'm not helping you. That's the point. Shit hit the fan after only two days of me staying in the office. My Discord group had decided to get drunk and play Cards Against Humanity. I highly recommend this by the way, and I told my partner this. He just said okay, and so I went upstairs. Once I was already pretty tipsy, I got a message asking me to come downstairs. I told my Discord to pause the game and give me five minutes. When I went downstairs, he looked at me with the scariest face and said, you want to tell me anything, huh? Holding my old phone. In our entire relationship, I've never done anything to be disloyal or anything, so I had no clue what he meant. I asked, still giggling from the drink, tell you what? I didn't remember exactly what he said, but he said that he knew, and I should admit it to him now because he had evidence. I still had no clue, so I told him this, still stumbling a bit, and asked to see the evidence. He proceeds to go through my old phone's photos until he reaches over four years ago, well before we were dating by the way, and shows me a picture of my rapist. Not a naughty picture or anything, literally a selfie. He showed me this smugly and proceeded to tell me that I cheated on him with a guy who raped me before we were even together. Ladies and gentlemen, they say it's impossible to fall out of love instantly, but that's been proven false. I gave him one last chance to take it back and asked him, are you jealous of him? And he confirmed that yes, he wished he had done it first. In his defense, I genuinely think he worded this badly and didn't mean he wished he had sexually assaulted me. But holy hell, my drunk brain did not like that one. I don't even remember what I properly said, but I broke up with him on the spot. I explained, I'm staying in the office until I find a flat, and he's not to talk to me at all. He realized that him trying to guilt me has backfired, and he started crying. I just went upstairs, put my headset on, and said, guess who's single? Long story short, my Discord collectively decided to keep me on a video call constantly because they had a bad feeling about me still living in the same house. And God... They were right. He left to stay with his mum, who's down the road, but decided to try and kick the door down at midnight. Why? Everyone in the Discord was flirting with me. Mostly jokes, and this dude took my old phone and logged into everything to find more stuff to guilt me on. I had to phone my parents to pick me up because he had gotten in and was throwing shit around, accusing me of cheating again. I'm now staying with my parents until I find a flat. And I'm lucky to have my Discord friends because if they hadn't witnessed his freak out on camera, I don't think anyone would have believed me. Love you guys. My word, I had to pause when he was talking about the sexual assault stuff. The wishing he had done it. Oh, I can't even say it again. What an absolute scummy person. And I was very, very glad to hear that OP's now staying with their parents until they find their own place. Because staying in their current place clearly wasn't good when he's turning up, kicking the door. And it was such a contrast from the, the first part of the post. Initially, I was thinking, yeah, I know, I'd probably break up with that person. But, you know, there was still a chance of them getting back together the way it was sounding. I found the whole moving furniture stuff weird and for him to just, like, leave. Well, you know, she was invited to go to that party as well. But it still felt like there might have been a way around it. But then that update, holy shit. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And for our next story, we're going over to the Entitled People subreddit from JDXINK, who says family takes seats at theatre. So I witnessed this years ago, and I've been dying to post it somewhere because I always felt like the conclusion was so satisfying it was worth sharing. So me and my friend went to see a play at a small theatre. Beauty and the Beast. Loads of fun. We got the tickets late, so I ended up at the absolute tippity top of the place. I love that. But right next to the bar, so no problem. During intermission, my friend went to the bar and I stayed to watch our seats. This section is not assigned seating, so I'm looking back over my shoulder in anticipation of her coming back. When I see a family of four approach, four kinda empty seats. I only say kind of empty because the previous occupants had left their jackets over their chairs to reserve them. This isn't a rule, but where I'm from, it is generally respected. If there's a coat on the chair, it is occupied. Find another. This family, however, decided to ignore etiquette and gathered up the other family's belongings and dumped them on the empty chair in the row in front. So now I'm glued to this. How are the next family going to react? I wasn't close enough to hear anything, but the previous occupants came back another family of four, and things get heated. I could see the parents of newly seated family pointing aggressively and their mouths moving fast. They're not giving the seats up. 
So non-seated family walk away and come back a moment later with a member of staff. I'm thinking, uh-oh, shit's about to go down. <laughs> but the family and the staff member walk right past the seated family. They keep walking and disappear out another door, only to reappear a few seconds later inside one of those fancy boxes that sit right next to the stage, the ones that usually seat famous slash important people. I look back to the entitled family. The mood is visibly ruined. I'm just sitting there, buzzing off the contact high of witnessing such a satisfying moment of karma. <laughs> I'm buzzing just from reading that, to be fair. Now, I think the coat rule is pretty universal. I'd love to know if that's, it's not anywhere else. Anywhere I've ever been, if you leave a coat on a chair or whatever and you're going to the bar to get a drink, you know, you don't take that seat. I can't imagine what goes through your head to think, you know, I'm just going to pick up their coats and chuck them in front. The only time I've ever seen something similar is like at swimming pools on holiday when people take all the deck chairs, they put the towels on them at like six o'clock in the morning or something like that. I've actually seen a man go down there and gather up all the towels and then chuck them into the swimming pool before. There's actually some YouTube videos of people, you know, commentating races <laughs> about going for the deck chairs. They do, they, they, they do it like a sports thing. It's absolutely hilarious and such a great spectator sport. But what do you guys make of this one? Have you ever been in a similar situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And we'll grab one more story from the entitled people so Reddit because I love this stuff every now and then. This is from Battleaxe 1959 who says jerk with boat parks across five handicapped spaces and I call the cops. I used to be a stock car racer. I quit when I was hit and slammed into a wall and fractured a vertebrae. Every Friday we would race and then stop at a 24 hour restaurant that had lots of parking so we can park the truck and car hauler and still see it. The restaurant is also half window so it's easy to see your car or truck with trailer no matter where you park. One fine day, we drive to the restaurant for dinner by car. I have a handicapped placard, but there is a truck with a boat parked across all five handicapped spaces. I called the cops. I have a handicapped placard, spine surgeries, and it ticks me off when people do this. After we gave our order, a police officer arrives. Cue the drama. The boat owner observes the officer outside and goes out to meet him. We couldn't hear the conversation, but there was a lot of gesticulating by the boat owner. Officer hands him some paper and departs. Boat owner returns to the restaurant and he is ticked, like I stormed the capital kind of rage. He starts going off at the restaurant employees who assure him that they didn't call. He doesn't accept that and is screaming at a bunch of teenage employees. I stand up and said, I called them. He then turned his rage on me. I grew up with a father who had anger issues, so this guy was nothing new. I learned to lean into these things and called him out for being an entitled jerk who thought giving his boat special treatment was okay. I pointed out the spaces we used to park our race car, perfectly visible, so why be an ass and take five handicapped spaces? He called me a bunch of names and then his three boating buddies stepped in and said it was time to leave. Turned out he got five tickets, one for each spot at $250 each, a very expensive lunch. Maybe next time his gray matter will remind him to be a better person and avoid $1,250 in fines. Made for an interesting meal. And my favorite thing about like entitled people stories like parking dramas, neighbor dramas, I can always picture it so vividly or my version of it. And I can just, and I know it's not going to be exactly the same because I've watched too many movies and stuff like that. So in my mind at the minute, I'm picturing like one of these sort of like American diners in the middle of nowhere <laughs> with all this drama going on and people like sat at the bar <laughs> on the stools ordering their coffee and stuff. But I would love to be a fly on the wall in that situation watching that go down. Oh man, I live for it. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this? situation if you do have a moment of your time share your stories with us and get involved thank you so much and, and just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in all of today's stories your love your support your time not just towards me but towards each other as well it means the absolute world to me and don't forget at the very end of the video there'll be a couple of playlists there that you can click on and it will automatically scroll through all the videos for you so whatever you're up to it will continue doing that Thank you so, so much. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.
face Don't mind, clothes on, start my day Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows Okay, I know that today will be a good day Okay, I know that today will be a good day A, B, C, one, two, three Drink some 